celebrity stars in their eyes. Please welcome your host, Kat Dealey. Celebrity stars in their eyes, as always, backstage is a parallel universe of stars. It's a surreal mix from over-the-top Hollywood royalty to under-the-table Irish rogues. The doors are waiting, and first on, a man who's opened plenty of them for the rich and famous. It's celebrity star number one. Hello, I'm Paul Burrell. Some of you know me as a royal butler. Some of you have seen me on TV in various disguises. But today, I'm here at home in my flower shop in North Wales. I filled palaces and castles with flowers. I was taught by the court florist at Buckingham Palace exactly how to do it. This is my wife, Maria, my long-suffering wife, Maria. <laughs> She's the star, not me. One minute, I'm hobnobbing with famous celebrities in America, in Hollywood. And the next minute, I'm arranging a 20 pound bouquet for a little old lady down the road. I don't suppose anybody has where we actually met. Yeah, Buckingham Palace. But, but you didn't sing then, did you? I did. I used no. to sing. Oh, but you never heard me. I used to no. sing whilst I was walking the corgis. I'm glad I didn't hear you. I, walking through Buckingham Palace Garden or up Bumhall, where nobody could hear me, I used to sing with the corgis. They know how good I am. Well, it's not going to be easy. I've never performed live in front of a crowd. This is the first time I've ever done it, and I'm going to be scared. Don't wet the tissue. If you're watching, Your Majesty, I'll do the best I can. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's Paul Burrell! <laughs> that wasn't bad for a kid from Birmingham, is it? It's quite good. lush, isn't it? <laughs> and now, you've got to tell me, how did you get your job? <laughs> I applied for lots of jobs in, in Cunard, P&O, Trust House 40, all the hotel groups. Yep. And... What I didn't know was two letters arrived at my family home on the same day. I was away in a hotel in Bournemouth. So how old were you at the I time? I was 18. OK. Mum opens both letters. Yeah. And my little brother's getting ready for school that morning, and she reads the two letters. One from Cunard, the cruise line, yeah. offering her a job as a steward on board the QE2. Yeah. And the other job was at Buckingham Palace. So Mum looked at both letters, and she said to my little brother, you must never tell our Paul what I'm about to do and she burned the letter from Cunard on the coal fire. So my mother chose my destiny. Are you glad she did? Yes, because I got to do everything I wanted to do in life. I got to sail around the world on a very nice ship. Absolutely. <laughs> on the Royal Yacht Britannia. So very, very, very nice. I did very well, didn't I? OK, Paul, give us a few clues as to the person you're going to be. The person I'm going to be tonight mm -hmm. was born in Philadelphia in 1949. Mm -hmm. He's devoted a lot of his time to the people of t Tibet. Mm -hmm. And the song I'm going to sing tonight is from one of his most famous films, Chicago. OK, so come on, tell us, who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Kat, I'm going to be Richard Gere. Richard Gere! <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Singing Razzle Dazzle live, Paul Burrow is Richard Gere. Dazzle, dazzle them. Give them a light with lots of flash in it, and the reaction will be passionate. Give them the owl, hocus pocus, bead and feather ram. How can they see with sequins in their eyes? What if your hinges are a rusting What if, in fact, you're just disgusting Razzle-dazzle them And you'll never catch wise Give them the old razzle-dazzle Razzle-dazzle 
give them a show that's so splendiferous. Row after row, they grow vociferous. Give them the old flim flam flamax, fool and fracturan. How can they hear the truth above the roar? Throw on the fake and up an eagle. They'll never know you're just a bagel. Razzle dazzle run, and they'll beg you for more. Spot. You have no talents. Razzle dazzle, razzle dazzle, razzle dazzle, 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 and they'll make you a star. Brilliant. Aren't they brilliant? I wish I could have rolled in on one of those. <laughs> that would have been impressive. <laughs> the last time I did that was from, a, from an aeroplane at 40,000 feet, coming down in a parachute. I think I'd rather have done that, cat. What, the thing here tonight? No, it's fun. Really? It's great, Good yes. Fun. You like all the sequins and the oh, sparkle I love and the... all the show tunes. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah. Musical theatre. Absolutely. Lift your heart. What do you think your previous employer... Do you think they're going to be watching? Oh, oh. Do you think Are they're... they watching? Do you think, uh, they, do you think they will Hi, be? Hi, guys downstairs and... Good evening, Your Majesty. Yes. <laughs> well, what do you think they're going to be thinking? Didn't he do well? Didn't he do? <laughs> you think they're going to be proud? I hope so. Well, sir, you did us proud. Thank you. You did us proud. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Burrell as Richard Gere. <laughs> can take on the doors, perhaps his old employers might be tempted by our next family special. The Windsors as the Osbournes. <laughs> I'll leave you with that thought and see you soon. of football and Spielberg at the Oscars, there's one name that's dominated the winner's podium here on Stars in Their Eyes. That name is Emmerdale. Absolutely no pressure then for celebrity star number two. Hi, my name's Tom Lister and I play Carl King on Emmerdale and I'm here with my mates today and we're going to play a bit of golf. So if I just quickly introduce you to the boys, we've got Bibbs, Dave, Hi. and uh, Shooter McGavin. All right. Matty. Well, on Emmerdale, I play a character called Carl King. Nope. <laughs> He's a bit of a, a ladies' man. He's not the brightest button in the box, but um, he's got quite a genuine heart. That little village over there in the background, that's actually where I live, where I've grown up. See if you can improve on that drive. <laughs> no. There'll be, there'll be no money there, then. <laughs> when I first got the call to ask if I was going to be on Stars and Rise, I thought, mm, mm. I can't find it. Flipping stupid golf. Never had to kind of, like, pretend to be somebody else, so I'm a little bit panicky about that. On the night when I'm standing through those doors, probably going to be petrified, probably going to be full of adrenaline, and I'm going to be like, right, come on, let's do it and get it over with. But uh, uh, there's a little bit of me that's looking forward to it as well. Come on, I'm ready for a pint. <laughs> He's born to be a king. It's Tom Lister. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Now, have you always wanted to be an actor ever since you were knee-high to a grasshopper? Well, no, actually. I was going to be um, a PE and geography teacher. That's very different. When I was at school. Yeah, I kind of like was really into my sport and things like that. But right. then the uh, art teacher who'd written this play about World War I... Right. Um, asked nice the happy topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he asked the football team to kind of all be in it. So uh, we all kind of went into this show together and I got the lead in it and 
kind of got the bug from there, really. And you've had it ever since then. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's a weird coincidence about the character that you play in Emmerdale, isn't there? Yeah, well, I, um, I had auditioned for Emmerdale 12 months previous before I actually came into it, but okay. then, unfortunately, I didn't actually get it that time. Okay. Um, somebody, it went to somebody else. But then I actually auditioned a year later uh, for a new family yeah. and actually got the part. Yeah. And then six months down the line, my character killed this uh, guy off. Unfortunately, that'll learn him. Yeah. For getting your part, <laughs> that'll learn him. <laughs> getting your part in the first place. Yeah, no. um, now, tell us a few things about the person that you're going to be tonight. Well, the star I'm going to be tonight oh. um, started playing piano at the age of eight. Yes. And he taught himself, and he's now one of Britain's top jazz singers and pianists. And um, his album Twenty Something went platinum and became the number one jazz album in Britain. So, come on, tell us who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Kat, I'm going to be Jamie Cullum. Jamie Cullum, Jessica. Mwah. Good luck. Off you go. <laughs> Singing Everlasting Love live, Tom Lister is Jamie Cullum. I did enjoy it, yeah, it was fantastic. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this isn't the most scary thing you've done on TV. You've wing walked as well, haven't you? Well, I, I, did, I had an episode of Everdale where I had to kind of prove my love to uh, the uh, girl that I want to marry on the programme, and uh, they forced me to sit on top of this biplane and fly across the sky, and my character suffers from severe vertigo. Okay, so which was worse, doing that? Or wing walking? Well, I quite enjoyed the wing walking, me myself, so that was <laughs> definitely <laughs> 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 Enjoy that. <laughs> well, I did enjoy it, but it was much worse nerve-wise. 
You're oh. okay, you're okay. Oh, it's okay, you're in one piece. It's okay, you did well. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Lister as Jamie Cullum. <laughs> Threatened by bloodsuckers in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and menaced by witches in Charmed. Right, bloodsuckers and witches. Good training for her part in Footballers' Wives, then. Who's celebrity star number three? Hello, my name is Fina Arucha. You might know me from playing Liberty Baker on Footballers' Wives. Come with me. Let's go riding. In the past, you might have seen me on Buffy the Vampire Slayer or perhaps in NYPD Blue, in Nip Tuck, in Charmed, Diagnosis Murder. I was born and raised in Liverpool, but I've lived in America for a decade and worked there and played solely American characters. So, you know, I can go from New York to Scouse in about half an hour, you know what I mean? <laughs> As the Americans would say, Liberty Big is a kick in the pants. She's funny, because she's so complicated, there's so many things to do. Plus, I get to clack around in Dior and big costume pieces and tiny dresses and bikinis. My job is me, 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 me. I'm so important, I'm so glamorous, Blah. And here it's muddy and disgusting and fantastic. I love it. Come on, horsey. When I heard that I was gonna be on Stars in Their Eyes, I laughed for a long time, and after that, I panicked. This is professional suicide, um, but I'm game for a laugh. <laughs> it's true. Scale of one to ten. Terrified, I reckon that I'm a comfortable eleven. <laughs> All blinged up with somewhere to go. Here's Fina Arucci. Hello. That was a sachet if ever I saw it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, it's true you used to be a model, isn't yes. it? Yes. Guilty. Guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the jobs that you've done. Oh, I've been very blessed. Um, I was working with Carl Lagerfeld, I did Chanel, oh, yeah. I did Christian Lacroix, I've done British Vogue, I've done Elle, I've done a lot. Very wow. nice, very, very blessed. Um, so you did modelling, you did all that great work, yeah. and then moved into acting? Yeah, and I started off quite well with Buffy. Because it was really a phenomenon, wasn't it? That The fans thing. of Buffy are in a league of their own. It's kind of like the Star Trek fans and stuff. They're, no, they're... no, no, it's totally like this. That's perfect. It's okay. totally like the Star Trek fans. They yeah. follow you, they send you things, they ask you to send them items of your personal clothing, which I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so come on, give us a few clues about the person you're going to be today. Ah, uh, this lovely lady mm -hmm. started singing when she was 13. Yeah. She had her big break with Sister Act Two. Okay. And she was in a band called the Fugees with two other members, one of whom was Wycliffe Jean. OK, beautiful lady. So come on, tell us, who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Kat, I am going to be Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Singing, killing me softly, live, Fino Ricci is Lauren Hill. Strumming my pain with his fingers Seeing my life with his words Killing me softly with his song Killing me softly with his song Telling my whole life with his words Song. 
mistaken you for Lauren before, haven't they? Yeah, and I sign horrible autographs to say terrible things. Do you? Never. I'd be really never, tempted never, never. to go, you smell, love Lauren. <laughs> just, just to tease, I would. Just to mess up her popularity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, what for you has been the most terrifying thing about this whole thing? Your own voice coming back to you. Because in the shower, it sounds different. It's true. <laughs> Everybody sounds good in the shower. Yeah, basically, right. basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fina Arucci as Lauren Hill. <laughs> And yet still the celebs come throwing themselves into the path of our makeover juggernaut like showbiz hedgehogs ready to be flattened under the tires of glamour. <laughs> and while I work out exactly what that means, I'll see you after this. Spooky sometimes. Years before appearing in Coronation Street, our next performer had a comedy stage name very similar to the pop legend she's chosen to be tonight. So here to tell us that name and give us a few more clues, it's celebrity star number four. Hello, I'm Jane Tonicliffe, and uh, you're probably used to seeing me up to my arms in chip back, shoplifting, or eyeing up the blokes as Yarn alum in Coronation Street. But today, I'm at home in Manchester. This is the view from my flat. Uh, you can see the whole of Manchester here. You can even see where I work, so there's no excuse for being late. This is my fiance, Mark. Uh, we've been together for about nine months. He's been really, really supportive throughout all this. He's sat there patiently playing the guitar while I've croaked my way through this song. This is Manchester's famous comedy store, and now I've done stand-up here loads of times, and stand-up is one of the most scary things anybody could do, but nothing compares to the nerves I feel about doing stars in the eyes. <laughs> it's not like the Rovers in here. There's no tarts for a start. <laughs> when Mark's out of the house, I tend to be more free with my voice. So I'm doing all my me, 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 me kind of um, exercises. I think the next door neighbours will be sick of hearing that song over and over again because I've got it on repeat on the CD player. I'm not a singer and that is really nerve-wracking because I've only sung in a comedy way before, so there's just no getting around it. I'm frightened to death. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jane Tunnicliffe. <laughs> I am very nervous, but still so looking forward to you it. You will yeah. be absolutely fine. Now, this isn't the first talent show you've done, so to speak, no, is it? No, no. What was um, the first one you did? Um, I did Bob Says Opportunity Knox, okay. and uh, I was a punk poet. Um, a punk poet? <laughs> punk poet. Very strange titles as a poem. Did you dress as a punk? No, it was kind of qu quite straight, but it was a little bit like John Cooper Clark and all those kind of ranting poets at the time, but okay. funny, because like, not Pam Ayres, a bit more more edgy than that, really. Okay, so what were some of the poems you did? Uh, Quick Joyce and Get the Vacuum. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> about that one. Um, Anarchy in the Ukulele. And uh, They Should Have Sung Love on the Rocks, which was a kind of a spoof of, of Opportunity Knox type of act. Okay, you do know. you remember any of them? I don't. And one of them was about Baker Foyle frocks and, and <laughs> singing Love on the Rocks. <laughs> Just general silliness. Yes. But you're here now, so come on, give us a few clues as to the person you're going to be. This lady's mother um, was called Baroness von Sasha Masuk. 
very well remembered. Double <laughs> barrel. Um, uh, her career began when her potential was spotted by the Rolling Stones manager at a party. Okay. And the song I'm going to do tonight was a top ten hit in 1964, and it was written especially for the person by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Pretty good. So come on, tell us, who are you going to be tonight? <sighs> tonight, Kat, I'm going to be Marianne Faithful. Marianne Faithful. <laughs> yes, it is. Come on, you watch it. Off you go. Good luck. Singing as tears go by live, Jane Penniclick is Marianne Faithful. It's fine, thank you. I really enjoyed Did it. Did you? Yeah, Did yeah. you? It was great. And what about the hair? Because I think it really suits you. Not since I was 13 have I been this college. <laughs> and isn't there a weird coincidence between you and Marianne Faithful? Isn't there, that weird? There is actually because my stand up actor used to be called Mary Unfaithful. That was my stand up persona. She was a bit of a rock chick and a ah. bit of a slapper. <laughs> <laughs> so, not yeah. like the real Marianne at no, all. Not before at all. We get to no. Well done, you. Thank well you. Done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jane Tennecliffe as Marianne Faithful. Well done. Famous face has spent his entire life trying to be a pop star, but had to settle for playing the hits rather than making them. So tonight, we finally make a dream come true for celebrity star number five. Hello, I'm Mark Radcliffe. Monday to Thursday, late at night, you'll hear my disembodied voice at Radio 2, live from this place, the BBC on Oxford Road in Manchester. Here we go, live. Hello, Mark Radcliffe here in Manchester with more. I think a lot of people who know me, well, are quite surprised 
that I've sort of come out of my comfort zone of darkened radio rooms and done uh, into the bright lights of show business on a Saturday night on the telly. I'm slightly surprised myself, to be honest. And these are some of the guitars that were used on the classic Shy Horses albums that myself and Mark Riley did. And it's broken there because uh, after I took it off, I just threw it on the floor every night. Rock and roll. Kylie Minogue sat here, um, uh, Robbie sat there, David Bowie sat there, Paul McCartney sat there. This is uh, my original copy of David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, which uh, if push came to shove, um, I would still pick as my favourite album of all time. I would say it's got to be more than what? 50 records here, easy. Perhaps even more than 60, who knows? These are the New York Dolls. I don't think I'm going to be nervous at all. I mean, that might sound terribly arrogant. That doesn't mean that I think I'm going to be good. But, <laughs> you know, as I say, it'll be over with quickly for everybody's sake. A transmission transformation with Mark Radcliffe. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Ooh, I'm fantastic. Are you looking forward to this? Really looking forward to it. It should be a laugh. It, eh? it, should, it yeah. should be all right. <laughs> now, tell us about some of the people you've interviewed. The two big ones for me, because when I was growing up, my hero was David Bowie. Yeah. And I got to uh, go to New York and interview him, which was, wow. I, was God, I was so excited. I'm very you know? jealous. Yeah. After he'd gone, I took a photograph of his sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other big thrill more recently was getting to go and uh, interview Kate Bush. Wow. At her house, and that, that's actually um, all people want to know. Because nobody, nobody no. gets an interview with Kate Bush. Absolutely. So I went to her house for um, a cheese flan for lunch, and we talked, and she was lovely. And she's uh, people think she's this kind of uh, gothic witch living in a big castle, <laughs> and she's just the most lovely, ordinary working mum. Mm. That can, and that's why she doesn't do anything because she's kind of you know takes it seriously being a mum, and yeah. she pops into the shed and makes the odd album, and uh, yeah. that's her life, and she's wonderful. <laughs> a few clues about the person you're going to be. Right, well, um, I'm a big fan of this, a real big fan of this person, and uh, though he kind of has a, a, a reputation as a proud Irishman, mm -hmm. he was actually born in England. Okay. Um, his big hit that everybody knows, because it came out again last year, was a duet with Kirsty McCall. Okay, yeah. And uh, he's, uh, from time to time, and, and more recently he's got back with them, backed by a fantastic band of musicians called the Pogues. Okay, so come on, tell us, who are you going to be tonight? Tonight, Kat, I'm going to be Shane McGowan. Shane McGowan. <laughs> oh, good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Off you go. <laughs> Singing the Irish Rover live, Mark Rathlis is Shane McGowan. July 1806, we set sail from the sweet cove of Cork. We were sailing away with a cargo of bricks from the Grand City Hall in New York. It was a hell of a crap, she was rigged far enough. I know how the wild wind blow. Oh, she stood several blasts, she 27 masts, and they called her the Irish Rover. Of all blind horses' heights, we had four million barrels of bones. We had five million hogs, six million dogs, seven million barrels of porter. Oh, we had eight million bales of old nanny goat's tail in the home of the Irish Rover. Oh, it was all we could do to play hard on his flute when the ladies lined up for a set. She was shooting with skill for his public quadrille, though the partners were blood out of bed. When he shot, when he tore, he was cocked on the wall. He took the game thunder and over. And they all knew what it meant. They could tell by his stand that he sailed in the Irish Rover. From Cali, Tyrone. There was Johnny McGurk, it was scared, never worked. And a man from a street called the Hole. Well, a slugger wrote to the was drunk as a rule. Fighting Bill Tracy from Dover. And your man made the gun from the banks of the
Good. Oh, yeah. I'm good. Now, you're actually a huge fan of this person. I think a lot of people know Shane McGowan and they think of him just as a drunk and he, and he does like a drink, there's no yeah. singing. Now. But I think he has written some of the most brilliant songs that yeah. I've heard in my life. And you've actually met him, haven't you? I have met him, yeah. Well, I don't know whether he'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, which was a big thrill, you know. And yeah. uh, he had uh, interviewed him for a programme we did for the radio and uh, he's one of my heroes and it was fantastic to meet him. You know what, more than anything, it looked as though you were having a great time. Well, I mean, time. what's the point in doing it unless you're going to have is, a laugh? What is, <laughs> yeah. what what, what would be the point? Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Radcliffe as Shane McGowan. Easy down the stairs. <laughs> Famous. <laughs> Infamous or just a legend in your shower. If you sound like a star, then call us. It's 090 11100 300 for a shot at the doors. It's 25p a call, or you can look up the details on Teletext page 579. But for tonight, it's five celebs, one audience vote, and one result right after this. <laughs> in their eyes. Now it takes a lot of hard work, preparation, bravery and prodding with a very sharp stick to get our stars through those doors. So before the vote, let's go backstage to see how it all happens. Sharp stick not included. I think I look like incredible hole. What do you think? And I am going to age very quickly. No, you're not. No, I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. Does this stuff stay on turn and then play It doesn't for a year. No going back now, is there? Shooting me with no makeup on, how am I going to convince anyone I'm a footballer's wife? One drink, please, oh, for this lady. Oh, very, very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that is so scary. I know. That's two days in the lives of our celebs mashed down to one minute. And now, here's just a few seconds of their performances to remind our studio audience exactly what and who they're voting for. First, Paul Burrell left his little village for the Windy City as Richard Gere. Give them a show that's so splendiferous. Grow and grow. Tom Lister took on an old standard in the voice of Jamie Cullen. From the very start, open up your heart, feeling you for everlasting love. Fina Arucci was one time Fuji front girl Lauren Hill. With his words killing me softly, with his song. Jane Tannicliffe gave us a very faithful rendition of a famous voice, Marianne Faithful. I sit and watch as tears go by. And finally, with the sound and teeth of a legend, Mark Radcliffe was Shane McGowan. <laughs> That
that's your five, that's your choice. There you key pads. You're voting for the best sound alike, not the best look alike. So please vote now. Is it Richard Gere? Jamie Cullum? Lauren Hill? Marianne Faithful? Or Shane McGowan? And the winner is Shane McGowan! Extraordinary. I take it as a tribute to Shane. You know, the people do love him. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> what a hoot. What a hoot. <laughs> and your wife, she kind of gave you a bit of a shove to come on to. Well, a lot of a shove, yeah. I mean, because I was thinking, oh, you know, I want to be cool, I want to be David Bowie, I want to be Brian Ferry. And she said, oh, no, you should be Shane McGowan, because when you play with your band, you're more or less him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, fantastic. So, do you think you can sing again for us? G stop me. Stop. Just try Go and stop on. me. Go that way. <laughs> Mark Radcliffe, everybody. The big prize on the show is singing your song again. No trophies, no record contracts, just a bit of fun. So please welcome the studio audience's favourite. It's Mark Radcliffe as Shane McGowan. <laughs> Six weeks and sail from the sea going on. I am a fan of LA with a cargo of bricks from the Grand City Hall in New York. Twas a wonderful craft, she was rigged for enough. I know how the wild wind blows. Now, where she stood, seven black, she 27 last night, I call her the Irish Rover. We had one million bucks, heard of us like a rat. We had two million barrels of stones We had three million sides of our blind horses' eyes We had four million barrels of bones We had five million hats, six million dogs Seven million barrels of porn He was suitably with skill For his tablets while Bill Told our partners were blood out of bed But in his shop when he's twerking Was caught on the wall He took the date and turned out and over Hey, I'll do whatever They could tell by his stance That he's sailing the Irish Rover For Cali, for a set. He was too glib with skill. For he stopped with what drilled all the partners were done out of bed. Who would he shot when he talked? He was cocked out the walk. He took their names under an over. And they all knew, and at last, they could tell by his stance that he fell in the Irish Rover. He had sailed seven years when a measles broke out. Shit lost its work and a fuck And a whale of a crew Was reduced down to just myself And a captain's old dog And the ship struck the rock Oh my, what a shock The bulkhead was turned right over Turned nine times around And a poor old dog was drowned Of the Irish road <laughs> but shouldn't it really be the bottom? You 
Congratulations. We will be back very soon for more stars, wherever they may be, before and after the doors. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.